Hey, you must be Nancy. I'm the cook, Shorty Thurman. Hi, Shorty. Welcome to Shadow Ranch. Come on over here and tell me about yourself. You okay. have talked to the Raleigh's, right? Beth said something about a phantom horse. Do you know what she was talking about? Sure do. See, I was just about to crawl into bed last night, when all of a sudden, this glowing horse comes galloping up outside. It stops and rears and paws, whinnying and snorting. Then it just wheels around and gallops off into the night. It was Dirk Valentine's horse, you know. Now it's a phantom. Um... Dirk Valentine? Dirk Valentine was an outlaw around here back in the 1880s. Legend has it he was in love with Frances Humber. That's the person she on lived the right here on Shadow Ranch. Oh. Unfortunately, her daddy was the sheriff. Ouch. Because of him, Valentine was captured and eventually hanged. Ever since, the ghost of his horse has been roaming the desert, cursing whoever sees him with bad luck. You don't really believe that, do you? All I know is, Ed Raleigh sees the horse, and what happens less than two minutes later? He gets bit by a rattlesnake. You do the math. Well, I'd better get going. Pleasure talking to you. You talked to the Raleigh's? I sure did. Do you think Ed's gonna be all right? He'll Hello. be okay. Getting bit by a rattler's no picnic, but it sounds like he's out of the woods. Shorty told me about the phantom horse that appeared just before it happened. Did you see it too? It was the strangest thing I've ever seen. Guess you're gonna be asking me a lot of questions, huh? I don't know. Why do you ask? The Raleigh said you were a detective. <laughs> Their niece, Bess Marvin? She told them that, and she exaggerated. I'm murder. gonna be honest with you, ma'am. We were short a couple hands to begin with, and now with the Raleigh's gone and everybody on edge over what happened last night, well, this is not a good time to be visiting Shadow Ranch, that's all. The Raleigh's asked me to take something out to Mary Yazzie's, but it's in the den in the roll-top desk, which is locked. They said you had the key? Sure do. They gave me their key ring at the hospital. Great, thanks. To get to Mary's shop, just follow the trail that goes northeast out of the corral. Can't miss it. And I should probably warn you, she doesn't like the Raleigh's. Why not? No idea. Not really any of my business. How do you think that rattlesnake wound up in the Raleigh's bedroom? Probably crawled in through a mouse hole sometime during the day and took a nap. Night times when they're most active. Something the Raleigh's found out the hard way. Has anything like that ever happened here before? Not since I've been here. I'll let you get back to work. See you later. Da da da. What else? Got some wood. Got a thermometer. Phew! Talk about your scorchers. Yeah, that was. Fun. I didn't know thermometers went up that high. Clearly they do, Nancy. It goes up to 120. Where do you? In River Heights, does it just not get above 80? What? I was right. It's hot. Yeah. My antiperspirant's going to get a workout today. Okay, never mind. We're just gonna stop with that. Na na na. We're supposed to go to get a horse. So which one are you? What? Excuse me? The Raleigh said they were gonna be inviting some young ladies out here. I take it you're one of them. Yes, I'm Nancy Drew. And you are? I'm the head wrangler. You want a ride, you come to me. You prove to me you know what you're doing, I may just let you. How do I prove to you I know what I'm doing? First thing you're gonna do is never ride unless you're wearing a hat and gloves. And unless you got a full canteen of water, you can wear that hat over there. It's Mrs. Raleigh's. Got a helmet built right in. Her gloves are on the <laughs> saddle you'll be using. And you can get a canteen from Shorty. Then you're gonna saddle and bridle your horse. No need to brush them. I do that when I bring them in. Then you're gonna lead him to the mountain block in the corral and mount up. Then I'm gonna ask you some questions. You can't ride outside the corral till you get all the answers right. Once I pass your test, can I ride any time I want? Long as you talk to me first. When you're done riding, you're gonna dismount, hook your horse up, take the saddle and bridle off and put him back where you got him. Always keep your gloves with your saddle. Do these horses ground tie? Yep. If you get off when you're on the trail, don't tie your reins to nothing. Just drop them. And barring an earthquake or something, old Bob will stay put. Bob? Who's Bob? The horse. The bay over there. Name's Bob. That's who I'm putting you on.
Did you see the Phantom Horse last night? I saw something. Just what? I still ain't sure. May I go riding now? Nope. With the Raleigh's gone, the ranch is real short-handed. Before you ride, you're gonna have to go see if Shorty's got any chores that need doing. Uh, Gotta get a canteen from him anyway. Talk to you later. If you last that long. Yuck, chores. Okay. Need something? No. Talk to you later. No hurry. You're just a ray of sunshine, aren't you? Well, hello there. You got some friends back there? Hi there. You two aren't too shabby looking either. Hello? Nancy, hi, it's Beth and George. Hi, I'm at the ranch. Where are you guys? Yes. Uh-oh. I'm not going to like this, am I? We're at the airport in Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> Our plane had to land here so they could fix some problem with the radio, and now they're saying we could be on the ground for hours. Hours? You're kidding. Who knows what's really going on? Yeah, no one around here ever gives you a straight answer. So what's going on there? Mm, nothing much, if you don't count the fact that last night Uncle Ed and Aunt Bet found a rattlesnake in their room. Oh my gosh! Are they okay? Well, actually, it bit Uncle Ed. <gasps> Is he all right? He will be. Right now, he's in the hospital. He'll probably be there for a day or two. Aunt Bet's staying with him. Oh my gosh! And apparently a phantom horse showed up at just about the same time as that snake. A phantom horse? Of all the times to get stranded in some stupid airport. Look, you just better keep us posted, Nancy Drew. That's all I gotta say. We're so bored, George just bought a book on 19th century clothing and accessories. Really? George did? It's the only thing in the bookstore here that looks halfway interesting. So if you need to know anything that's even remotely related to 19th century fashion, let us know, well, okay? No, Sounds good no, to me. Will. So what else has been going on? Apparently last night, this glowing horse came galloping up out of nowhere, caused a huge commotion, then went galloping off and disappeared. It was glowing? It looked like it was glowing. You're there investigating phantom horses, and what are we doing? A big fat nothing. That does it, George. We're suing the airline. The cook, Shorty Thurman, he says the phantom horse belonged to this outlaw named Dirk Valentine, who was hanged back in the 1880s. Is this Valentine guy a phantom too? Uh, I don't think so. Well, how come his horse got to become a phantom and he didn't? Best. Best? Phantoms don't really exist, okay? According to legend, seeing the horse is bad luck. I believe it. I mean, look at what happened to the guy who owned him. Don't you think it's kind of odd how that rattlesnake showed up in the Raleigh's bedroom right after that phantom horse showed up outside? You don't buy that it was an unfortunate coincidence? I think it was more like a well-planned distraction. So, you're saying someone used the horse to lure everyone outside, then put the snake in their room, knowing no one would be watching? It's possible, don't you think? But if you're right, it means someone wants to hurt Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed. Oh my gosh! If you're right, it means that someone is on the ranch! And whoever it is must be working with an accomplice. You know, someone to wrangle the horse. To so go everyone there is a suspect. That's right. Well, you don't have to sound so happy about it. That's it for now. Thanks for calling. Bye, Nan. We didn't... you called me. Okay. Hey there, Nancy. Man, I wish the Raleigh's were here. Me too. It'll be nice to talk to them in person. I'm really looking forward to you and me sitting down and having a nice conversation. Especially with all the weird stuff that's going on. I'm so busy getting all their chores done in addition to my own that I barely have time to talk to myself, let alone to you. Enough of me complaining. What's up? Tex said I should get a canteen from you and see if there are any chores you'd like me to do. Music to my ears. First thing you can do for me is go out to the garden and pick all the ripe vegetables. You know what ripe vegetables look like, don't you? You bet I do. Good, because if you pick vegetables that aren't ripe yet, I'll be real ticked. You can put them in the vegetable basket that's hanging outside. And one more thing. Sometime today, I need you to build a cooking fire in the pit outside. I'll light it when I'm ready to start cooking. And be sure to fill the bucket out there with water and leave it by the pit. 
You know, just in case something catches on fire that isn't supposed to. Yeah, the Raleigh's good. wanted to have a cookout tonight, and by golly, we're gonna have a cookout no matter who is or isn't here. Well, I'd better get going. Pleasure talking to you.